Anything that's been digitized is not private. And that is terrifying. Hi, welcome to the video. In this video, I will talk about what happens when we click on agree to terms and conditions without even reading them. Let me ask you, when was the last time you read the terms and conditions before clicking the agree button? I am sure that most of us here do not even bother to read them. We don't even know what we're agreeing to. No one has read the terms and conditions. No one in the world. No one, even the lawyers who wrote it, wrote it like this. So, do these terms and conditions that we sign up for, even apply? Are privacy policies really about protecting our privacy? Or, taking it away? In 2009, GameStation, a company in the UK, put some pretty sneaky stuff on their website. For one day, their terms stated, By placing an order via this website, you agree to grant us, a non-transferable option to claim, now, and forevermore, your immortal soul. This was obviously a joke and it was live only for a day, but this makes me question, what if there were more serious consequences, that might result from not reading the terms and conditions? Let, let me let me give you some very practical tips. Uh, first of all, uh, I want everybody here to be careful about what you post on Facebook. Yes, the former president of the United States of America has said that. If we look at social media, what does Facebook has as an asset? It's more than two billion people and a ton of data on those people. And let's not forget that Facebook also owns Instagram and WhatsApp. How would you feel, if Google was effectively $500 a year service, because that's the value of the data, that you are providing? Both Google, and Facebook, are free services. And some people are willing to give up information about them, in exchange for having access to something that's free. We always want something free, and plenty of people are willing to provide information to get that, and plenty of companies, have picked up in this fact. If you did a search and a Gmail and a YouTube and so forth yesterday, and you did it from your home, I'll give you the worst case. You did it from your home, and you only have one computer in your home. In theory, we could cross-correlate those and, and get all, all three together. Uh, we don't do that, and we're not likely to do that. And in January 2012, Google made changes to their privacy policy, and they did exactly the same. Google combined all of the information any of their service has collected about a person, and put them into one single profile. There are companies that claim to have a large amount of data on the average American citizen, everything from whether you are right-handed or left-handed, what kind of dog you have, and a lot more. In Minneapolis, a father came into Target. He was outraged that they were sending pregnancy coupons to his teenage daughter. The man thought that Target was trying to encourage his daughter to get pregnant, and it turned out Thanks to her shopping habits, Target knew that his high school daughter was pregnant, before her own father did. The father, later apologized. So, you may wonder, is there something more serious that we are agreeing to? Total, information, awareness. A program initiated by the US government in 2002. Its mission was to collect every digital transmission imaginable. And yes, this was their real symbol the eye of the pyramid, scanning the earth with the laser beam. It actually looks similar to what is inside Mark Zuckerberg's hoodie. Making the world more open and connected. Oh my god, it's like a secret Ooh. cult. <laughs> the public was outraged and the program was shut down. According to Department of Homeland Security reports, Facebook has replaced almost every other CIA information gathering program since it was launched in 2004. I authorize the National Security Agency to intercept the international communications of people with known leaks, links to Al-Qaeda and related terrorist organizations. It was taken less than 24 hours after the Bush presidency ended for a former analyst at the National Security Agency to come forward to reveal new allegations about how this nation was spied on by its own government. The National Security Agency had access to all Americans' communications, faxes, phone calls, um, and, and their, uh, their computer communications. There was an article in Times where it says, They are sitting in their transparent cubicle, in their open space at Facebook office. 
Robert Mueller, the head of the FBI, comes in the room, and he says, I was just in the building and I wanted to say hello to Mark Zuckerberg. A little chit chat, and then he leaves. Now the question is, why Robert Mueller, the head of the FBI, was in the building? This guy had a rough day at Apple store. And he decided to share his experience on Facebook, where he got a little aggressive. And it turned out into something he didn't expect. Hanging out on Facebook, getting ready to go to yoga class, and there's a shave and a haircut. Two bits, knock on my door. <laughs> Open it up, boom, NYPD SWAT, their bulletproof vests on, their guns drawn, and they uh, tear the place apart. When the one cop, you know, I finds the box that has all my like military awards. He comes bringing it down. He's like, oh, you were in the military. And we start talking like, you know, army talk. He sees that I speak the language. And that's when he asked me, he was like, so do you know what an Armalite AR-10? And I was like, that's that's why you're here, guys. You're here because I put I made a bad joke on Facebook. It, it blew my mind. Like it can be, it's the ultimate buzzkill, really. It's your Facebook page is, is brought SWAT to your house. They claim one of my Facebook friends called 911, which is another thing I think is bogus. So I asked for the 911 tape, <laughs> which they keep on file. They have to. So they come back and say, oh, uh, it turns out it wasn't someone that called 911. It was someone that just walked into the police station, and that's something we don't keep a record of. And how would you get my address? I'd lived there for like 10 days. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't update my mailing address yet, like all my banking stuff was still going to my old apartment, like there was nothing saying I lived there except for a verbal agreement. Yes, this guy was visited by the FBI, because of the red flag that came up in their spy system. And one of the argument I hear a lot is, who cares if they are collecting all of this information about me? I don't have anything to hide. Actually, we are probably hiding something from someone, we all do. And the bigger problem is, even if your friend, or a friend of your friend, who you don't even know, commits a crime, that came up as a red flag by their spy system, then that person, his friends, his friends of friends, in this case you, or me, would also be red flagged. And that, is terrifying. They just did a knock up on his door, so, it seems very likely that we might get a, uh, a Mark Zuckerberg sighting today. These guys, reached out to Mark Zuckerberg to ask him the same question that we all want to know. And, that's how he reacted. Hey, I'm working on a documentary. Um, I have a little blog here, but I'm wondering if I could just ask you a couple questions. Sorry. Really? Can I ask, do you still think privacy is dead? What are your real thoughts on privacy? Are you guys recording? Um, we are. Can you please not? Um, I can stop, yeah. Alright. Can you please not? Um, I can stop, yeah. Alright, can I come by your front desk though and ask about setting up an interview? Yeah, I mean, we have a department where you can talk to people about that. Yeah, I know. I've, I've tried going through it a few times and I, I never hear back. You can see the difference. Mark started listening when he thought they stopped recording. You can see the relief on his face. Don't we all deserve the same, the relief of not being recorded, or spied? So, shouldn't we be concerned when the government is able to read our emails, text messages, search history to track our movements and limit our free speech? In other argument, so what if the government can acquire all of this information? It might be good for national security. And, besides, it's already too late. The clips in the video are taken from a documentary terms and conditions may apply. In fact, this video is a short summary of the documentary. The link to the documentary is in the description. If you like the video, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel.